Here, one. do you want me to pop her for you? Yeah, here, please. let me. Here, I'll pop that. Okay. Hang on. There you go, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Today, you're going to meet Guy Simpson, railroad blockade buster and local hero. Thank you very much for that. The illegal far left wing shut down Canada rail line blockades came to Alberta Wednesday morning, but friends, they didn't even last till Wednesday night. I love my province. You see, the blockades are not just of rail lines. They include obstructing access to government buildings, politicians, homes, major ports and infrastructure. The whole protest movement alleges to be in solidarity with the Wet'suwet'en people against the coastal gas link pipeline in northern BC. However, that could not be further from the truth. You see, the democratically elected Wet'suwet'en Band Council and eight of 13 hereditary chiefs all support coastal gas link. This is just a bunch of far left wing urban environmentalists colonizing the livelihoods of regular Indigenous people and harming the economy of Canada. Now, when the blockades came to Alberta, we weren't having it. A handful of Alberta men decided they weren't going to stand for any of it. Soon after the blockade went up west of Edmonton, these severely normal men went and took it down themselves. Now, I've already introduced you to blockade busting Chase Chomi and Zach Solomon Lamaru. Now I'm pleased to introduce you to the happy warrior who made the first move to pull down the blockade, who along with a few other Alberta men has done more to support the rule of law than any of our politicians or policing authorities. Here's my interview with Guy Simpson, blockade buster. I am pleased to introduce to everybody um, someone I would call an everyday hero. This is Guy Simpson. He is the guy who started it all, you started tearing down the blockade. Guy, what made you even go down there that day? Because it seems like, I've talked to a couple of the guys that were down there now, none of you really knew each other, but you all headed down there anyways. And that's exactly true. I uh, woke up in the morning, I seen the post that uh, they had set up a barricade, and I know that our government's doing absolutely nothing about this, the RCMP's doing nothing about this, local police are doing nothing, nobody's doing anything, I had to step in. I've been unemployed now for a while. I'm an oil field worker. Enough's enough. We need to get Canada moving again. Uh, I sense in your voice that you have an accent that you're not from here. Where are you from? And what brought you to Alberta so you could be a proud Albertan? I'm from Kingston, Ontario, and it's the oil field that brought me to Alberta. I've been out here now for 21 years, almost 22, and I'm loving it. I love this country. I love Alberta, and I bleed the colors of our, our Canadian flag and Canadian oil. Now, what was it like down there? It seems like, well, you guys were pretty well behaved, but they were trying to bait you into a response because they knew the TV cameras were there. Oh, they most certainly were. I'm not gonna lie to you. When I looked in some of their eyes, I seen blood in their eyes. And my biggest concern right now is that they don't actually want a peaceful resolution. I think that they are looking for something more. What do you think that is? Honestly, I think they want a war. I really do. It's sad for me to say, and I really hope that that's not the case, but so much of my gut is telling me that they do not want a peaceful resolution. Um, if they want a war, I don't think you guys are going to give it to them. Uh, I, I think they are outmatched in the testosterone department, um, and you guys didn't behave the way I think they anticipated you would. I think that they... Uh, underestimated you guys as a bunch of just out of control rednecks and they didn't get what they wanted out of you. They most certainly did not and yes they most certainly were uh, trying to push my buttons and I don't know if you call me a redneck or not I do have a red birthmark on the back of my neck so. <laughs> so uh, when you were down there um, you guys had a trailer you were loading their garbage, their sacred garbage, <laughs> into the trailer. Um, a, a couple of them jumped into the trailer, tried to stop you. What did the police do? Oh, they did absolutely nothing, of course. They sat there and did nothing. When uh, one of the guys that was protesting there with, or counter-protesting, sorry, with me, he uh, tried to get the police to come down when they jumped into the trailer because they were trespassing. They were in the trailer. They were not invited in the trailer. And they're simply trying to take out 
their garbage that we put in there to clean it up. <laughs> One of your guys got hit in the neck. Yes, he did. And wrong, wrong on so many levels. Like, the, this is not, we don't need violence. We're not trying to get violence. We don't want violence by any means whatsoever. They're the ones that are trying to escalate it to that. Um, so what's next for you? Are you, you done with uh, the blockade clearing business? What's going on? Oh no, they still have a few of them set up across this country and I will get these tracks rolling again. These trains will roll. You have a Facebook page? I most certainly do. It's called the uh, Barricade Bandits. And I would muchly appreciate any, uh, any support that I can get. Come on in, join it. Well, I, uh, I have a gift for you um, from uh, everybody. Uh, I'll appoint myself the spokesperson for the farmers the farmers that can't get their grain to market, the stranded via rail passengers. There are thousands of people um, who are laid off in rail. Forestry is threatening layoffs. Um, but you guys did something that nobody else is willing to do because you proved it can be done and it can be done peacefully. But our politicians and our authorities refuse to do what a couple of Alberta guys with their backs and their hands in a trailer were able to do. So I'm going to give you my microphone just for a quick second. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, wow. And thank you very much. Thank you, Rebel News. <laughs> and thank you, Canada. The usual disclaimer, I am not sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft, but I am definitely open to a sponsorship by Miller Genuine Draft. It's not much. Um, but it is the least that all of us can do. Uh, there's 18 beautiful clear bottles of Miller Genuine Draft in there and it is Friday so I'm sure that they are going to go to good use. Each one of those represents thousands of Canadians who care about the rule of law and just thank you for standing up for it. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. I'm, I'm just dumbfounded right now. I really am. I'm speechless. <laughs> well, we're going to keep fighting for freedom. We most certainly are. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Friends, it has become my personal mission, my personal joy to thank and honor these ordinary men who are doing the extraordinary when no one else would. If you know another person who is there that day defending the Canadian economy and standing up for the rule of law, please message me so that I can personally thank them with a small token of appreciation, a case of beer of their choosing. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. One of the men who pulled down the blockade that day with Guy Simpson was assaulted by a far left-wing activist. And so far, the police have done absolutely nothing. To see the video of him being assaulted and to help us bring the assaulter of Zach Solomon Lamoureux to justice in a civil suit, please go to cleartheblockades.com.